Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to day three of the Lancaster Insurance Classic Motor Show here at Birmingham's NEC. Um, it's been a fantastic show so far. It's almost drawing to a close. Um, we're getting the last few entries uh, to the Mazda MX-5 uh, competition that Lancaster Insurance have been running all year. I'm here with Dave Youngs, the car club manager of Lancaster Insurance. So the uh, draw will happen in a couple of weeks' time. Is that right for the Mazda? Oh, indeed. Last, last chance to enter is at this event. So today, when the show closes, will be last chance. Uh, and then we'll draw the winner next week. Excellent. Well, that's really exciting. But of course, time waits for no one. So we've got uh, another car to unveil ready for the 2020 competition. We have. Um, I think we should probably get on and do that now. And let's then we it. can talk about it, can't we? Let's so do it. This should is we really do exciting. Yeah, so let's get the unveiling let's done. Do let's now. go for it. Excellent. Thanks. Excellent, really exciting. Well, that's a really nice uh, contrast from the uh, Mazda MX-5, isn't it? I've Absolutely. I've always been a big fan of the uh, Ford Escort Mark III. Dave's coming back to join us again. Uh, yeah, the yeah. guy that uh, chose the car. Absolutely. So uh, we did a Golf GTI a couple of years ago. We did. Then we've gone to a Roadster, and then we've gone back to a, a hot hatch. Arguably, I reckon, one of the most iconic hot hatches of the 1980s. Absolutely. But we're here with Paul from the XR Owners Club who can uh, give us a bit of expert uh, insight into an Escort XR3i, hopefully. But um, before we do that, Paul, I just want to speak to Dave about sort of choosing the car. Um, tell us a bit about the car itself and how you came to find it. Uh, well, we, we literally decided a few weeks ago that we would surprisingly unveil this car at this show. It was never an intention. Uh, so I, I basically chose an XR3i, a car I own many of during my youth, um, and is yeah, very much an iconic classic now. Uh, so we got in touch with a, with a contact of mine I know through my brewer, um, he found me the car, I went and looked at it, love at first sight, bought it there, job done. Fantastic, and of course it's next year 2020 marks the 40th anniversary of the unveiling of the uh, Mark III. That was a switch to front wheel drive for the Ford's Escort, of course, it had been hugely successful as the Mark I and Mark II, but I think it's the Mark III that sort of secured Ford's dominance of the market in the 1980s, and the Escort topped the best sellers list for, I think, all, if not most, of the 1980s. Paul, I'm assuming you've owned XR3s yourself, or you certainly know a bit about them. Um, um, th this yeah. particular one is, uh, what year is it, Dave? It's, uh, well, Coincidentally, 1984, so it's 35 90, years old, perfect. fits with Lancaster, fits with the show, it, it was meant to be. Excellent, so it's a 1984 car, so when Lancaster Insurance was created, it's the, also the debut year of the Classic Motor Show. 1984 makes it a relatively uh, later car, it's XR3i, so it's fuel injected. It is the yes. injected one, yeah. Excellent. And is it, is it Rosso Red Bull? No, it's uh, Sunburst Red. Sunburst Red, so that's an earlier car colour. Yeah, some people call it sunburst orange because it fades over time. For the for the future owner of this, they need to make sure they invest in some good quality polish and all that sort of thing to keep the colour. Park it in the shade, that sort of thing. Look after it. Yeah. Give it a Excellent. good buffing. Get a decent car cover. Decent and Dave, I'm cover. guessing things like an XR3i, that's sort of bread and butter for your insurance business. You know, a lot of people, owners, enthusiasts of hot hatches oh, cover is, that sort of business. Yeah, 80s hot hatches. We work with the XR Owners Club. Um, so XR2s, XR3s, 4s, you know, we love them. And sadly I'm old enough to remember when you could probably buy one for £500, but those days have long gone, haven't they Paul? Long since gone, you used to buy them for £500 because they probably failed an MOT, getting a bit rough around the edges and people just couldn't be bothered to do them up because you could probably pay £1,000 and get a much newer, more modern car yeah, yeah, sure. in that sort of market. Yeah. So a lot of them got left to rot, scrapped away, that then gives them the rarity value and then the market seems to pick up again. Well, because like with, like with any fast rare. forwards, as they get rarer of course the value does go up doesn't it? Absolutely. And although they were quite ubiquitous in their day, yeah. um, they become rare, people remember them fondly for like you say, like you and I would have been driving around in them back in the day. Yes. And um, you know, so we, we remember them fondly and that, I think that nostalgia effect drives the value up, particularly with fast forwards people so, um, who had them when they were younger or whose dad had them and I've been stood on the XR stand today the amount of people that have come up to us and said yeah I have one of these I wish I'd have kept it but if everybody had kept the old XR there would still be lots of them around now they wouldn't be rare and 
you probably wouldn't have shows like this sure. because there would be ten a penny. XR Owners Club, does that cover all XR badged Fords? All XR badged Fords from the XR2 the, to the 2i, the 3 to the 3i and the XR4i. And XR3s as a proportion of club membership, is that, a, a, would the, you say that's evenly split? Or? I'd say the majority of them are XR3s, the, the Escorts seem to be the Perhaps more popular car. Guys. Both 3 and 4, then you get the cabbies, mm, and it does cover the cabbies because some of those are not badged as an XR3 I, which I believe was done for insurance purposes, but the spec is exactly the same, so they are welcome. We also have the Super Sport Register, which is the original Ford Fiesta, the sort of the precursor to the XR2, so they're encompassed in the club too. Excellent, and is it going well? You've had a good show? Absolutely wonderful. Excellent. So, tapping your brains, getting, picking your knowledge of XR3Is. Yes. This example looks pretty spotless to me, but Oops. there's probably things that we need to be looking out for, maybe things we want to do with the project. Um, I, I would say looking at that more preventative medicine. Rust proofing. Rust medicine. proofing, wax oiling, looking after the engine, good quality oil. Because I mean, I, I, I ran a CVH engine escort, sadly not an XR3R, but valve stem seals were the thing, weren't they? Yeah, they'll smoke a bit when you first start them up. Um, if you don't know how long the, the cam belt's been on it, just put a new one on, just do it. It's not worth wrecking the engine for a dodgy cam belt. Sure. The, the cheap enough, serviceable items, you know, a full, full set of tools and parts for a service, less than 100 quid, you service the whole engine. It's going to last you. So Dave, we've got some exciting plans I think for the for the car. Probably there's way more we can do, but you've got a few ideas already about what you might, might like to do with the project. Yeah, a few, a few bits and pieces. I mean, the car is very, very tidy. The bodywork is, you know, is pretty close to immaculate. Um, so we've, we've got no plans to do anything with that one. Uh, it is actually carrying a very, very old Ford, uh, not even a radio cassette, it is just a radio. Um, so I think the idea would be to look at some sort of stealth install yeah. Um, yeah, with a, with a not a huge modification but just something a little bit subtle yeah. uh, in that, that regard uh, the driver's seat slightly collapsed as I think they, they, they all do yeah. um, so we I know a guy who's very very good with that well we'll get in touch with him and see if we can get that work done excellent good good well that be I'm really looking forward to covering that uh, project car I think we're going to see it in the pages of classic Ford magazine and uh, classic car buyer maybe um, as well as classics monthly so we'll be following that throughout next year of course to mark the 40th anniversary of the Mark III Escort so um, it's great and it's I, I see you must see a lot of owners taking huge amounts of pride in their, oh, yes. in their cars um, and that's basically me making a very cheesy segue to the, the next bit because Lancaster Insurance also are very much involved in the pride of ownership uh, display at the Classic Motor Show aren't they? Absolutely. So uh, we've got an opportunity to talk to last year's winner yep. uh, John Smith who had a 1964 uh, VW bus, I That's believe. Absolutely beautiful. So, We've actually got that bus here on our stand this year. Great. So um, we're, we're going to have an opportunity to uh, talk to him, and uh, we're going to follow that up, I believe, with uh, this year's winner, who's only just been announced this afternoon. Yeah. Um, who's uh, got a Morris Minor Million, I believe. Yeah, so Ted Brooke, a guy I know very, very well. Uh, he's a very, very proud winner. So yeah, we're going to have a chat with him. Excellent. Well, look, let's go and uh, cut to that, and uh, we'll uh, go and speak to them now. Lovely. Thanks for it. I bought this bus uh, five years ago at a Bonhams auction in RAF Endon. Spoke to the uh, auctioneer and said, we can't stay, can we do a phone bid? So we were driving up the M1 motorway and I, uh, my wife bought it. I was driving, she was telling me what the auction bid was and uh, we eventually bought it and bought it while we were driving up the M1, so that's, that's how I bought it. it. It had lived in Germany, in a museum in Germany, for four or five years, and it wasn't registered in the UK, so we had to register it. All the windows are stamped with the original registration, so we applied for it to the DVLA and they gave us the original registration, what it had in 1965. The split window, the, the, the front of it, I just think it's a smiley, happy type vehicle, you know, that's the appeal to me. Winning last year's Pride of Ownership was, was a great accolade, really, and fantastic. We did a bit of a deal, we said if you vote for it, you know, you, you can have a sit-in. 
<laughs> just for a bit of fun. We had the deck chairs outside, so we made it look as though it were, you know, we were on holiday with it, yeah, so it were really good. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you're going to raise the roof when I tell you that the winner of this year's Pride of Ownership is Ted Brock and his yeah! My car is a 1961 Morris Minor Million. Uh, it's number 167 out of 350 made. Um, it was in poor, very poor condition when I bought it in 1993. It took 18 years to restore it. Moved house in between, and it's been finished now for eight years. In 1961, when BMC made a million Morris Minors, they made 350 in this colour. 20 of them were left-hand drives that went abroad. They tried to get the remainder, 330, one in every dealership around the UK. No, on the minor million register, there's roughly 75 to 80 left that's known about. I mean, the whole car is standard Morris Minor, apart from the colour and the badges and the, and the, the interior. The interior was very poor condition. So it's a completely new trim set, headlining, carpets, seat covers, everything. Coming here and this, this weekend and winning the Pride of Ownership is just fantastic. It, I, I, there's so many lovely cars here, I, I had no idea it was, it was going to be me. Well look, that's all we've got time for on day three of the Lancaster Insurance Classic Motor Show. Thanks for watching Lancaster TV, it's been a lot of fun, I'm certainly looking forward to following the project XR3i next year to mark 40 years of the Mark III Escort uh, and looking forward to obviously giving it away at the end of next year and thanks also to those pride of ownership uh, owners that we've spoken to today and thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon.